today I'm going to show you how to create a graph in Excel. I have found some data for us to graph, which is carbon dioxide concentration data. And you can find that in your web browser by just Googling CO2 Mauna Loa data CMDL. And that comes up as the, the one that I want comes up as the second choice on this Google search. Um, another way to get to this would just be to type this web address into your browser. And this data comes from the top of Mauna Loa, Hawaii, a instrument up there measuring carbon dioxide concentration. And if you scroll down a bit, uh, the data is all listed here in columns. And I want us to grab the, the labels for those columns as well as the data. So just um, bring, bring your mouse up here next to that number sign and start holding down the mouse and dragging it all the way down to the bottom of the page until you have all of the data highlighted. You can see on the left that we're going through all of the years just up to about present day. And then if you right click on the data, you can copy it. Another way to do that would be to hit Control C. Now I want to open up um, my Excel spreadsheet, so I just open up Excel. I'm going to click in the very first cell, and I'm going to paste it by hitting Control V on my keyboard, or right clicking in the cell and pasting it. All of the data that's been pasted here is in rows, but it's not in columns yet. Um, they're not quite separated. So keeping that highlighted, I want you to go up to the Data tab at the top of the page, click Text to Columns, and inside this it's going to ask you if commas or fixed width separates your um, data, and ours has fixed widths. So I'm just going to hit Next. Um, it inserts some arrows in here to show where it's going to separate the columns for you. I hit Next again and then Finish, and it looks like it separated it for me into columns, so each of these cells now has different data in it. We actually don't need the left two columns, which is the day, the year and the month. So I'm just going to highlight those columns and delete them by right clicking on them. And then we don't need the right three columns, so I'm going to right click on those and delete them as well. Now I want to create a graph, so I'm going to highlight starting with the very first number, both columns, go all the way down to the bottom of your data. So I'm just holding my mouse down, go down to the bottom here. Once you've got all your data highlighted, I want you to go to Insert tab at the top of the page, Scatter. We never use line graphs, only scatter. And I want you to go to the bottom and hit this Scatter with Straight Lines. And it looks like our graph has popped up for us, although there seem to be some strange values in here. And if I put my mouse over one of those values, it looks like the value is a negative 99.99, and if we would have read that paragraph on the web page, it would explain to us that that's the value that they put in for missing values. So we want to go through this column. I'm going to highlight all of column B by scrolling up to the top here, and we want to find those negative 99.99s and delete them. So if I go to the right side of my page, I should have a, a find button, and if I type in negative 99.99 and hit find next. It will find those for me. I want to click on that box, the cell, hit my backspace and hit enter, find next, click on the cell, backspace enter, find next, cell, backspace enter. It looks like these are right in a row here so I'm just going to do them all at once. Find next, And it looks like we found them all. So let's close this, go back down to our graph, which is probably near the bottom of our data. And it looks like that problem was fixed. We just have a line now. So I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger so we can see a bit better. And now I want to add some titles to my graph. So I'm going to go up to the Design tab at the top of the page and pick the chart layout furthest to the left. And this one will give me some options for chart title and axis titles. I'm going to title my chart Keeling Curve. Let's call it Mauna Loa Carbon Dioxide Concentration. And if you just click outside of the box, it'll make that permanent. Let's click on the access title on the left and let's call that 
concentration in ppm in parentheses, which stands for parts per million. The bottom, I want you to label the x-axis year. If I just click outside of that, it'll come up. Uh, the only other problem I see is uh, we have this data only really going from 300 to 400. So if I click on my y-axis, right-click on it, format axis, I can fix the bottom to 300. I can fix the top to 400 and hit close, and that looks a little bit better. Um, if you want to get rid of this series one, this might come in handy if you have multiple lines on the graph, but we only have one here, so it probably isn't worth having. You can just hit the backspace button and it'll get rid of it. Another thing you can do in Excel is create a trend line. So if I click on the data and then right click on the data, one of the choices is add trend line. It's choosing a linear fit for us, which is great. And I'm going to check uh, display equation on chart and display R squared value on chart. Hit close. Go back to my graph. I'm going to throw this in a spot where I can read it pretty well. And in this equation, y equals mx plus b, m is our slope, 1.4735 parts per million per year is the slope of this graph, which means that carbon dioxide is increasing by that much each year. The r squared value tells you how close we are to having a, a linear fit, a perfect line. If it was 1.0, that would be a perfect line, and we're just a little bit off from that. So once you have your graph created, we can do a couple things with this. We could save it as a picture, and one way to do that would just be to right click somewhere in the graph, usually outside of the main area, hit copy, and you can open up paint. If you um, hit paste and paint, it will paste our picture there, and we just want to make sure we crop it so we don't have some extra white space. And then I would save this as a picture. Let's just throw it somewhere on the desktop so you can remember it. Let's call it Keeling Curve Image. Oh, I already had one from my practice round here, so I've got one there. And one other thing you can do then is open up your Word document. Let's say you wanted to type up a lab report or something like that. What you could do is insert, go to picture. You could navigate to your desktop and find that file, Keeling Curve Image, and we could insert it right into our Word document and then save that and email it to ourselves or put in your thumb drive so that you can save this and have it for your lab report. You could insert this image into a blog, you could post it on Facebook, whatever you'd like to do, it's just a regular picture file now. And that's how you create graphs in Excel.